guys. So tonight we are going to do some down home comfort food because I think we all just need a break from the hustle and bustle, right? So we're going to show you guys um, a recipe I don't make too often, but when I make it, then they always want it. Um, so we're going to do some homemade Salisbury steak. I know one of the memories I have of growing up was that frozen Salisbury steak. Tim, do you remember that? Yeah, it's not a very pleasant or happy memory. And so as I grew up to um, learn how to cook, it was one of those things that I always wanted to make um, and definitely make better than that frozen TV dinner. What did your Salisbury steak come with, Tim? Did it come with like a little side? A little brownie. A little brownie and like yeah. side of corn and like mashed some potatoes. mashed potatoes. Exactly. Um, see, we both are scarred from that memory, both of us, coming from different parents, so go figure, I don't know. Um, so we're going to do some Salisbury steak, and so I've already kind of started things, so this would be a little bit faster for you guys, and uh, let me flip this around and kind of show you guys what I've done. So we have six patties, Tim, you turned the wrong burner on, <laughs> y'all, this is like live TV, yep, he turned the wrong burner on, it's all good, baby doll. <laughs> um, so we have like a pound and a half of ground beef and I just mixed it up with some garlic rub and then it probably about a table, um, about a half tablespoon and then about a half a tablespoon of three onion rub. And then we had made fresh parsley yesterday, which you guys would have seen, um, me post the pictures of and, so I had that stored, so I threw in some fresh parsley into the recipe, some salt and pepper, and that's really it. And then you just kind of form your little patties. Um, so it's basically like a hamburger, okay, except for we're not putting any egg or breadcrumb, okay, because we want the, the meat to stay nice and moist. So let, it, let me know if you are joining me, and what are you having for dinner tonight? What is comforting you? I mean, it's like dreary and gray outside. It's cold, and I just got told that my kids are home for two more weeks. I mean, I love them. Don't get me wrong. I love them. But I guess I'm going to have to run back to the state store again. Maybe. I don't know. Things to consider, right? Okay. So we have the patties made up. Okay, so we did six of them. And then I have my 12-inch cast iron that is preheating because we want this pan to be super, super hot whenever we put the meat in it because you want to form that really nice crust. Um, if you haven't seen the cast iron pan, this one's brand new. It just came out um, in the brand new catalog, the brand new spring catalog. And what's really nice about it is that it's got a pour spout on that side and on this side as well. And then it's got handles on both sides. So if you are somebody that has had cast iron before, um, most cast iron pans have one handle and they're really heavy. And so trying to balance the weight of that pan versus one handle can be a little overwhelming. So I really like that they spread um, the weight out with having two handles and the shape of it is really nice. Have you guys ever used cast iron before? I know some of you guys have. I know I've talked to a couple of you guys. All right, who's joining us? We've got Wendy and Heidi. Hey girls, how are you guys? What are you guys having for dinner tonight? All right, so we got our patties ready, if you're just joining us. So it was about a pound and a half of ground beef, and then we mixed in about a half a tablespoon of three onion rub, half a tablespoon of garlic rub, and then some fresh parsley in there. And then I took a large onion, and I just went ahead and cut that up. Now, later on, you're going to need some beef broth, okay, if you want to make your own homemade gravy, which I recommend doing that. Um, so remember a couple days ago I had posted that we made a beef roast in the crock pot. Well, we had some leftover like meat and leftover, um, the drippings, et cetera, et cetera. And so we boiled that down with water and made our own homemade beef broth. So I have that ready to use. Guys, don't throw this stuff away. You can repurpose it just like your vegetable skins, any of your like onion, your garlic, any of like the seed pods inside of your peppers, anything like that, like I have my garbage bowl sitting here, anything like that can be cooked down with water and you just let it cook for a little while and then that residual liquid is then broth. So you can do that with chicken, 
You can do that with beef. You can do that with ham. You can do that with veggies, right? So <clears throat> last night we made chicken lasagna and we, we had gotten a rotisserie chicken. Um, and so we saved a little bit of the meat. Hey, Miss Karen, how are you? We saved a little bit of the meat and then we saved the carcass of the chicken. And so one of our next jobs is we need to boil down those bones and make chicken broth because we'll probably make chicken and dumplings this week because, I mean, who doesn't love chicken and dumplings? This week is all about comfort. That's what I say. Um, so that's what we did with the beef, though. We boiled it down, um, the residual leftover stuff that we had, and it made beef broth. So we're going to use that in tonight's recipe. So you'll need beef broth, um, probably about a cup and a half or so, right around there. And then you're going to need probably about a quarter of a cup of flour, okay? Um, so very simple ingredients. Is that what, like five or six ingredients maybe? Something like that to make Salisbury steak? I like it. All right, so I'm going to put you guys on the stand because my pan is smoking hot. And it is ready for our beef to go into. So we got our cast iron nice and hot. And you'll know it's hot because when it hits the pan, it should sizzle. And that's exactly what we want. We want that nice sizzling sound. So we're gonna put our patties in here. And let's see, I mean, I might get it like nice and smoky in here to the point where the fire detectors go off. I'm notorious for that. Um, I try not to do it at my host house, but I'm really good about doing it at my house. All right, so we got our patties down in there. And we're just gonna let these guys cook, okay? We're not going to worry about them. We're going to let them go. Let me wash my hands real quick. <clears throat> Let's turn the fan on to help prevent that anyway. <laughs> hey, Brianna, how are you? So if you're just joining us, we have homemade Salisbury steak in the works. Um, Simple ingredients, like I said before, it's about a pound and a half of hamburger. We added in some garlic rub and some three onion rub and some fresh parsley. So basically like a burger, minus we're not putting any breadcrumbs or egg in it at all. And then you just shape your patties out. And then we're cooking it in a cast iron skillet. So you guys will see right here uh, that we have it in the cast iron skillet. Let me scoot you guys a little bit closer, see if we can get a little closer. There we go. And we're just gonna let them do its thing, okay? You wanna let it cook, don't touch it. I know we're all creatures of habit and we love to move our food. It's like this ungodly like sense of I need to touch my food and I need to move it. Just let it go, okay? You just wanna let it go. Because what you want is that nice crust on the outside of it, kind of like a steak. And that's why a cast iron pan is perfect for a steak because you get a true sear on it like a restaurant. And so, Nobody likes a dry burger. Well, even more so, I mean, I don't want to bite into shoe leather when I'm making Salisbury steak. So when you put it into a screaming hot pan, like a cast iron pan, and you just let it go for about three to four minutes before you touch it and flip it, you're gonna have a nice crust on the bottom of it. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So in the cast iron pan, I did have a little bit, did you add vegetable oil, Tim? Yeah, a little bit of vegetable oil down in the bottom of it. Um, and it's just doing its thing, okay? The other thing that we did ahead of time was we just sliced up a large onion and we have that ready for us. So super simple ingredients. So again, hamburger, parsley, which would be optional. You wouldn't have to add that. Some garlic and three onion rub. Again, you can find spices that you have in your home. Okay. Um, an onion. And then you're going to need about a cup and a half of beef broth, which we already made. And then you're gonna need about a quarter of a cup of flour. Super simple, you guys. So if you're somebody that's like looking for quick and easy recipes and ones that don't require a lot of um, ingredients, this is the perfect one. All right, so let's see. Brianna says, looks yummy. I can smell it from here. Well, girl, come on over. You know where I live. Um, how's Duncan doing? He is getting big. If he wasn't over there sleeping, I would definitely show you. And maybe I will. Maybe I'll run over and grab him in a couple minutes. Um, he's definitely getting big. What are you guys having for dinner tonight? Let's see. Um, Heidi says cooking cabbage right now already made chicken nuggets. What are you making with cabbage, Heidi? 
That sounds interesting. Chicken nuggets and cabbage, girl. I don't know. You, we definitely need to do your cooking show. Thank goodness you're on my schedule for April. Hopefully this stuff's all cleared up and we can have our cooking show. All right, so we're gonna give these guys a flip. Let me grab a spatula. All right, nice flip. And you guys will see, I'll bring the camera over here in a second. And we have a nice, gorgeous crust on the outside of it. Bam, I feel like Emerald Lagasse, but bam. Man down! Oh, Emerald Lagasse still around. Look at those from that cast iron. I, I could! I could totally bring him for a play date at your party. Georgia and Finn would definitely have fun with him, wouldn't they? Okay, so I just flipped all of them. Let's show you guys what they look like. Look at that. So that is the beauty of cast iron, you guys. Okay? So you guys will see there's a really nice crust on the outside of them, which means that all of the moisture and juices from the burger are trapped in the inside of it, okay? The other thing I love about cast iron is it stays hot forever. Oh, there's the, the hunky hubby. You guys see him? Hello, hunky hubby. <laughs> He's so camera shy, I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah, it was quick, right? That was like, I don't know, how long was I gabbing? Like three or four minutes? Something like that, probably, yeah. But that's what cast iron does. Um, if I were doing a steak, that's exactly what I would do to get the perfect steak. I would sear it for like three to four minutes on each side. I would pop it into the oven at 375 for eight minutes to finish it off. You'll have the perfect medium steak. I like my medium. So if you like medium rare, you would of course wanna do less time. Um, but yeah, that's what I love about this is that it's super easy. So I'm not gonna cook these completely all away, okay? I'm gonna sear this other side for like three to four minutes. We're gonna take them out, and then we're gonna throw in our onions and start sauteing our onions, okay? Why wouldn't I wanna completely cook the burgers in there? Well, because I want them to get into that nice gravy that we're gonna make here in a little while. Um, and so that means they're gonna cook longer, which means that I don't wanna dry them out and overcook them. So if you're ever doing something like this, like a chicken breast or whatever, and you wanna make any kind of pan sauce, just take them out about three quarters of the way cooked and then add them back in after you've made your soft sauce because then it has a chance to absorb it. Let's see, Heidi says, I had a head of cabbage and didn't wanna waste it. It is yet to be determined what we're having with it. Chicken nuggets were like a snack. Again, three chicken breasts taking up room in my fridge and needed to be used today. Girl, I'm selling you. There's so many things you can do with cabbage. Sure do you like coleslaw? Related. What? Sure, we're not related. I, my husband thinks you're related to him. <laughs> um, if you like coleslaw, I can send you my family recipe for coleslaw. It is absolutely amazing. Some of you guys have had it at cooking shows before. You know how fabulous it is. All right, so let's take our burgers out. All right, so we're gonna take these guys out. And again, let me flip it over. You guys will see. This is the one I just pulled, caramelized. So it's caramelized on both sides of the burger now. All right, and we don't wanna take any of the drippings out because that's part of the beauty about the cast iron. We want all that nice beef fat to be in there. And now we're gonna take our onions and throw those into our pan. And they're gonna start cooking right in the drippings from the burger. Does it smell good in here? Yum! We're gonna set these aside. I know, I know. So I didn't feel like going to the grocery store. Um, typically, if I were making this and I felt like running the grocery store, um, I would definitely put mushrooms in here too. I love to saute mushrooms and onions together and it is amazing in the Salisbury steak recipe. Um, so I would definitely, if you had mushrooms on hand, Add them in at this point when you're sauteing the onions. Hey, Danny Lynn, how are you doing? I'm frying it. We love some fried cabbage. Are you putting bacon in with it? Oh, you should totally throw some bacon in there, girl. Mm, 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 mm. Bacon and cabbage. Yes, please. Samantha, my friend, how are you today? I miss your face. Have I told you that lately? 
I totally miss Miss Samantha. I haven't got to do a cooking show. I need to come down to Alabama, girl. Maybe I need to come down to Alabama. I'm still thinking about that. I told my husband. All right. Well, let's move our onions. You guys see this? Like literally, our onions are almost completely caramelized already. And this is the beauty of cast iron. If I haven't already told you guys that, look, look at these onions already. And like literally, I just put those in there. Yum, this house smells amazing. Heidi, absolutely, you need to have this on your menu for the week. It's so easy and it's very few ingredients. You know that's what I'm all about. Hello, Miss Renee. <laughs> yes, girl, I would love to come down. You know me, I love to cook. All right, so our onions are good to go. All right, so let me flip this back around. Am I making y'all dizzy or drunk yet? Okay. So, whoo, I think I flipped it the wrong way. Ah, there you are. Okay, so we added our onions. Our onions are done caramelizing. We are going to add a quarter of a cup or so of flour, okay? And what I do is I just sprinkle it across the onions until I have all of the onions covered. And that's kind of how much I kind of eyeball it, honestly. Um, I think some of my favorite recipes are the ones you don't measure. Um, so I just put in enough and I'll show you. I usually do. Oh, last minute girl. You got to have bacon in there. I'm telling you. All right. So this is how much flour I just literally sprinkled it over the onions and the onions give off a lot of liquid, um, which is what we're looking to do because we're going to add our beef stock in here and that is going to be the beginning of our gravy. Okay. All right, so we just wanna make sure that we get these onions moved around to kind of pull up all of that flour. All right, and now we are going to hit it. Look, I keep flipping the darn camera around. We're gonna hit it with our gravy. So if you missed it earlier, um, we actually made this gravy with that roast from the other day. We just took whatever was left from the roast that we didn't eat um, and some of the like residual, you know, the stuff that's like in between the fat and whatever that I'm not chewing because ew, yuck. Um, and then with water and you boil it down and your liquid is left over. So now you've got your beef, beef uh, broth. So we're going to take this and this is going to go into the screaming hot pan. And so guess what's going to happen? We have that flour that's in there that's been cooking with the onions. We're just going to start moving it around. And now you're going to have this amazing gravy that's going to start to thicken up almost instantly. And I will show you guys here in a second. This, my friends, is the power of cast iron. This is exactly what a regular nonstick pan cannot do for you. And those handles are hot, I'm just saying. All right, let me add the rest of this in. All right, there, I think we're good. All right, so we're gonna let that come to a boil. I think we're good. I don't think we need the fan anymore. Now you can probably hear me a little bit better. Sorry about that. All right, so we're gonna let this come up to a boil and then we'll kind of see whether we need to add any more flour to it or not, but I don't think that we will. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, babe, does it smell good in here? Yes. yes, 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 he says. All right, let me bring you closer. Hello, Miss Kimberly. Hi, Kelly. How are you, ladies? I hope you guys are all having fabulous days. I know some of you guys that are working in healthcare. I can I just stop and tell you guys thank you. Um, the job that you guys are doing, like, oh my gosh, the the ones of you guys that are still out there working and still exposing yourselves and being so selfless, I love you guys. Love you, love you, love you so much. Um, there's just so much that's going on and. You know, you don't get thanked often enough. So, all right, so here is our amazing sauce that's starting to come together, okay? So that's just our onions that were sprinkled with the flour and then we added our beef broth to it. 
All right, so we're just gonna let that cook for a couple minutes. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually put these down into our gravy so that they can finish cooking. And then they're gonna pull all the flavor from that pan sauce to make the best Salisbury steak. So let me ask you guys this. Is this like any Salisbury steak you guys grew up eating? <laughs> me, when we started this, we were talking about how um, we had those frozen TV dinners of Salisbury steak that came with like the little chocolate cake and the corn and the mashed potatoes. Um, so <laughs> this is the Becky version. Um, just definitely a little bit better. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that cook. Let that finish cooking. All right, guys, so that's basically it for our, uh, ooh, wrong camera view. That's basically it for our Salisbury steak. So super easy. Is this something you guys would make your families? Make sure you drop it down below. And if you haven't already shared, make sure to share this to your personal wall um, so that your friends and family can also get this recipe because I think at this point we all need some simple recipes. Um, and of course, you know, being a small business owner, this helps me out tremendously. Um, I would like to say thank you to everybody that has hosted a party with me this month because I cherish each and every one of you guys as somebody that this income, you know, is it provides for my family. Um, this is not something fun that I do. This is actually my job and my full-time income. And so I cherish every one of you guys that help support me in every way that you do. Um, you know, and you know, if anybody is looking for a reason to be on Facebook and is willing to help me out, um, I have had a lot of parties cancel, but I have some fun Facebook outlines that are all about different recipes and helping people. So if anybody's willing to host a party for me, I would definitely appreciate it. And if you are, drop it down below. Um, you know, if nothing else, it's really just a way to distract from everything that's going around. Um, and I would definitely appreciate it. So consider it and uh, let me know, friends. I love you guys all so much. And thanks for tuning in. And you know I'll be posting pictures here in a little while. Bye for now.